that you that you hopefully you notice there. We're going to be taking just a summer break of our Wednesday activities, July the 10th through August the 7th. And one of the reasons we're doing that to give um, our children's ministry workers, um, our volunteers, to give them a little a little bit of a break. We're also going to use some of that time for some of our training. But uh, Wednesday nights from July the 10th through August the 7th, um, we're not going to. In fact, we were just going to do it in July, and we were talking in the board meeting Tuesday um, and started talking about the events of the summer. And, and it was like, well, what about this Wednesday night? I've got the youth pastor gone. I got the children's pastor gone. I got the pastor gone on, I think it's August the 7th. And so we thought, hey, it would be a wise idea. We might extend that one more week. And so uh, don't, don't get in too much of a habit of it, but we want it to be a time for rest. We want it to be a time for, uh, for training and those pieces. But I want you to be aware of that. But the, the Wednesday night prior to this, July the 3rd, we're going to have a family night. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> right, let me, on July the 3rd, we're going to have food. <laughs> That's what we should have done. Just call it a food night. Not a food fight, but a food night. And uh, one, of the reasons, one of the reasons we're doing that on July 3rd is normally we've participated in the, uh, in the Haslett Parade and kind of done that. We're going to move that over to Wednesday, July the 3rd and do that together. And uh, uh, the church is going to provide the hamburgers and the hot dogs. You just got to bring all the fixings. And so go online, go, on, go to our uh, website, destinyfamily.com. And on there is a sign up. One, we need to know how many people are going to be coming with you. And then two, um, sign up to bring something so we can make sure um, we just have a great evening. Not only a food, but a fellowship and those things. But family night, some of these are in the foyer. Uh, some of these po uh, little cards, advertisement cards, whatever you want to call them, are in the foyer. So grab one on your way out, pass it along, and, and let's just have a, a great evening on the third. And so... Uh, this coming Wednesday, yes, this coming Wednesday, our youth run off to camp. And all the parents said, Honolulu. And <laughs> Tony's really going to enjoy it. She's had one gone this week and then come back next week. She's going to think she's on uh, two weeks vacation or something. And, uh, but uh, just be in prayer for them as they leave. They'll leave on Wednesday. And be back on Saturday. Our, our children are coming back this afternoon sometime. Um, I, that's if Riley brings them all back. <laughs> and Kayla, Kayla, Kayla will go, no, we got to take them all back. And Riley's like, well, no, they'll all come back. But that will be this evening, um, this afternoon, probably this afternoon. And then tonight is Man Cave. Yeah, yeah there, there we go. There's what you need right there. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, but tonight, six o'clock, guys, come hang out with us. <laughs> anyway, all right. So uh, we'll let that slow, soak in a little bit. How's that? Um, but tonight, six o'clock, men, come and come and be with us as we have a time of ministry and a time of fellowship together. And so that's tonight at six. And so, um, are you ready for the work? Yes. All right. Uh, then, then I want you to, I, I'm going to ask this question, it's kind of, uh, this, this question is, is what, in coming today, what were you hoping to receive? Now, you don't have to answer that question uh, out loud, but I want you to have a thought for just a moment, because I think a lot of times we go and do things without really any intent. We do it out of habit, we do it out of tradition, we do it for some, because my mom made me go, and that's what I said this morning, uh, and no. You, 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 we don't really have any intent. Well, maybe God will show up today. Can I tell you, he's already showed up today. In fact, he was here before you got here. And he's, he'll be here after you leave. Not that he's just staying out here and just hanging out. But we anticipate and believe that he's every place that we would go. And so he desires to do something in you and to do something for you. And he's not, most likely he can if he wants to, but most likely he's not going to come down in, in the physical sense and come and sit next to you and say, hey, listen to this. But his spirit, his Holy Spirit will come and begin to allow the things that we hear and the thing, even the things that we do to begin to transform it. Um, I don't know where Shelby ran off to just right now, but and I don't want to pick on her. Everybody look around for her. Don't do that. But um, uh, listen, she was 
very vulnerable to some things in her heart, in her life. Can I tell you something? That was awesome worship because of that. Most of the time we can't tell anybody the things that we're struggling with because then they'll think less of us. And the truth is, as Paul said, in my weakness, then I become strong. Can I tell you something? They overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. You know what, you know what she did this morning? She, she used her testimony to overcome some things in her own life. And listen, hopefully it was a, a ministry to you and an encouragement to you as well. But can I tell you, that was awesome worship because of that. What did you get? Well, I can't believe she's up there leading worship. And she, hey, listen, she's just telling you that her, her own struggles with humanity. And we're not trying to point them out and say, hey, look, everybody. But the truth is, is it's when we come and we confess them to each other, what Scripture says, well, then the Lord begins to heal, begins to restore, begins to be a breath of fresh air. Um, when she said that, it reminded me of a, of, of, um uh, I think it was Phil Driscoll. Uh, for some of you that are too young, y'all won't know Phil Driscoll. He played the saxophone. He tried to sing a little bit. Had an awesome voice because he played the saxophone so much. His voice was really gravelly. And I was I was in college, my freshman year in college, and just in that struggle of missing home and and getting you know trying to acclimate to all the things, getting beat up, not not in a physical well in a physical sense, but not in a literal sense, right? In football and all those kind of things. And I remember. Um, I'm listening, uh, and, and I've got a story about that in just a second, but I'm listening on my headphones at night, and, it, and he, he begins the song, Haven't You Heard, Don't You Know, and that his voice is just, I, in, the, in the middle of sleep, it woke me up. And he began to sing, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew your strength. It was a breath of fresh air to my spirit. In the midst of a, of a transition in life, right? You're going from living at home to living in a sense on your own. And man, all the transitions and all that. And it was just a peace. I, 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 I'm telling you, in the middle of the night, it was, it was like that. It woke me up. But as soon as it woke me up, it refreshed my heart and my spirit. And so listen, we, we all struggle. I don't think there's any of us here that can say, oh, you're just in between if you aren't. We're just in between. Waiting for the next one. And when I say that, not in the sense of, oh, something else is going to happen. Listen, that's not our mentality. Our mentality is, is whatever comes my way, I have the ability, not in my own, but in his strength, I have the ability to continue to walk through this. We, we sang last week, all I did was worship. All I did was praise. All I did was bow down. And so it wasn't because of anything that we did. And so uh, let's, let's get started this morning. Um, we're, if you're in our reading guide, and I hope you are, we're using it as a resource. And we're, we're going to hopefully in the, in the months ahead expand on some of these pieces. But um, we've been reading through um, First and Second Thessalonians and First and Second um, uh, Timothy. In fact, this week we'll end, uh, we'll end this reading for June for June, yeah, golly, June, <laughs> can you believe it? Uh, we'll end, and it's uh, going to be through 2 Timothy. And uh, so we've been reading through that. And so I, I want to take a little bit of time to look at two, two different passages tied into something that Jesus said to us or said to his disciples, but is also to us. Um, one of them is from 2 Thessalonians and the other one is from 1 Timothy. But he gives insight to the church at Thessalonica. They, they had erred in some of their thinking. They had people come in and begin to teach some things that were contrary to the things that Paul had communicated and instructed with them. And so he begins to, to bring some instruction. He bring, begins to bring some insight uh, to the church there. But then in, we go into, into Timothy, uh, and in 1 Timothy, he's giving, he's giving uh, Paul is writing to Timothy, giving him instruction, giving him encouragement. Timothy was his spiritual son. He identifies him that way. Um, Timothy, uh, would, he would leave in charge uh, of some of the churches. And in doing so, here he comes and he, he begins to write uh, to Timothy. Paul writes to Timothy, telling him and encouraging him how he should lead the church. And so in 2 Thessalonians, it, this is where we'll begin. Um, 2 Thessalonians 2, um, 1 through um, 3. I, I may have told them 4, but we'll, we'll, skip, we'll go to four, uh, just to 3. It says, Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ... 
in our being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be easily upset in mind or troubled either by a spirit or by a message or by a letter as if from us alleging that the day of the Lord has come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed the son of destruction. And so he's, he's encouraging them and challenging them. Don't, don't, in fact, uh, it kind of ties in to some things that we've already touched on this morning. Now concerning the coming of the Lord, um, don't, don't be bothered. Don't be upset. Don't be troubled. Don't be fearful. Don't, we, don't be worrisome is what he's tell, saying to them. And he gives them instructions. Hey, these things aren't going to occur until uh, the great apostasy. And, and we'll take a few moments to talk about that. And then in 1 Timothy 4, kind of in the same vein of thought, he says, now the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons through the hypocrisy of liars whose conscience are seared. They forbid marriage and demand abstinence from foods that God created to be received with gratitude by those who believe and know the truth. And so, Father, in these few moments, Lord, open up our understanding. Lord, as we come and, and as we sit in this place, let us not just sit here passively, but allow our spirit to begin to engage the word. Allow our ears to hear and our eyes to see and our hearts to understand. Lord, that today that as we hear the word, that it wouldn't just be words um, in, in, in space, but Lord, that the Holy Spirit would begin to communicate and begin to challenge and begin to help and, to, and help us in every way to be all that you have called us to be. And we give you thanks. In your precious name, and all that believed it said, amen. 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 So um, a, a quick thought. Uh, you know, the, the punchline, the hook, is kind of the, the climax of a story. You know, some people know how to tell jokes, and some, you know, I'm, I'm not a really good joke teller. Because um, I, I, I miss the, the, the pause sometimes or, or rush, you know, rush through it or take too long or uh, all of that, right? But, but a good story has a good hook or a good punchline and, and those kind of things. And, and so here's a couple of thoughts. Um, the average cost of rehabilitating a seal after the Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska, and, and for those that are uh, young, won't know anything about that, but how many of you remember the Valdez oil spill? Come on. Oh, good. So I, at least part of my audience this today is with me. Um, and so um, when the oil spill came, a lot of the uh, wildlife was covered in oil. And so it said um, to rehabilitate them, to make sure that they were safe, it cost about $80,000. And so uh, a special ceremony for two of the most expensively saved animals were, uh, were released back into the wild amid cheers, applause, and, and everything from the onlookers. And a minute later, they were both eaten by a killer whale. That was some expensive steak. <laughs> it's like, oh, isn't that so nice? They release them back. Man. Man. The circle of life. Uh, a woman came home to find her husband in the kitchen, shaking frantically with what looked like a wire running from his waist toward the electric kettle, intended to jolt him away from the de deadly current. She whacked him with a handy plank of wood by the back door, breaking his arm in two places. Till that moment, he had been happily listening to his walkman. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, now I laughed at it a lot harder than you did. Uh, but the, the, the thing is, is the story, kind of follow along in both of them, and then you kind of get to that last line, that last little hook, that last little punchline. And, and it either gives explanation, it gives, it gives us something. And you know something, uh, whenever we look at Scripture, most of the time when we read Scripture, we never look at Scripture as to how, what's the answer. What's the punchline? Hey, listen, if you'll read Scripture and you'll read it oh, with the right, there'll be some things that you should just laugh at. Why? Well, it's Scripture. It's, it, no, listen, there are things that they did and the way that people responded that ought to make you laugh. 
Roman, uh, John 8, when Jesus says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And they said, we are of Abraham's descendants, and we have never been in bondage to anyone. That ought to make you laugh. Like, man, do you not understand what bondage is? <laughs> You are in slavery to the Roman Empire, but we have never been in bondage. That, that, see, if you'll read it in its full context, and so the ending of the story or the punchline of the hook, it, it, it makes impact. It causes, like in those, it gives us some, it gives, allows you to see the, the humor in it, if, if that's your kind of, that's my kind of humor. If somebody falls off the stage, I'm going to laugh at them. I'm going to go pray for them later, but I'm going to laugh at them first. I'm sorry. That's just, <laughs> that's just the way I am. Uh, and so, do what? Somebody said something mean to me. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, help them. <laughs> no, uh, help me. Um, but Scripture does the same. In Matthew chapter 24, we see Jesus responding to his disciples because they began to ask him because he was telling them about the end of times. And they come and they begin to say, okay, when are all these things going to happen? When is the end going to come? And, and go to Matthew 24 and, and you read all that. But I want to, because of the two passages that I've already read out of uh, 2 Thessalonians and then also 1 Timothy, I want to come to Matthew chapter 24 and look at verses 12 and 13. And Jesus said this. Talking about the end. Because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be delivered. Now, now lawlessness, I realize, is not a word we utilize all the time. Now, we see it. We may not call it that way. We may say, well, that's illegal. Or they're breaking the law. Well, in a sense, that's what he's saying. Because of sin, in fact, if you go to the Greek, it uses the word iniquity, and we don't use that word a whole lot either. But the idea is, is because of sin and because it continues to multiply, it continues to grow. And can I tell you something that's going to continue to grow? But here's the awesome thing. Here's the punchline. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Ha <laughs> ha! We live in the greatest days ever. You go, oh, no, these, it's so difficult. It is. But because of that, his grace is more than sufficient for us. It's more than enough for us. But w without jumping over there, because of lawlessness, because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. What, 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 what is that? What do we mean by that? What's that? Because sin is being rampant, it will cause people to lose heart. Because they feel God isn't doing anything about it. If you, and, and, and I struggle with this uh, in, in my own personal life. If you struggle with things being fair, that's just not fair. Um, I, I'll pick on Shelby a little bit because I can. Uh, and, uh, she said something, and, and, and I fully understand. I've done the exact same thing. She said, Lord, I'm doing, these, I'm doing all of these things trying to serve you. I'm trying to honor you. I'm trying to do all this. And yet I'm going through this. And I don't understand that. I mean, there's not anybody in this that, that, that can say, oh, I've never felt that way. There's not one. And you're just a liar. <laughs> you, need to, you need to repent for that. We've all said, Lord, I've done all of these things and yet I'm still facing this. Why? Why this difficulty? Why this challenge? Why this struggle? And, and see, that's what he's saying. He says, there are going to be people because sin will increase, because lawlessness will increase, things that seem unfair will increase. It will cause them to lose heart. In fact, what they'll say, what people will say is, why live righteously? It doesn't matter. The world gets away with it. God hadn't done anything yet. Where's God in all of this? Whenever we face difficulty, when we see things and you go, I cannot believe this. When people go, man, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Why? What is, because you don't know why it gets worse and worse and worse? That's the consequences of sin. It's the consequences of sin. When, when, when the enemy would come and attack Little kids with sin, and I say attack, with, but I get this, with sin, or not with sin, but with disease and something. Like, it's, I'm going to just tell you something. The devil doesn't fight fair. He doesn't care how, how young you are, how old you are. 
He doesn't care how godly you are or any of those things. And you go, oh, no, I'm afraid. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm going to stand on his promises because it brings peace to my heart, to my soul, to my mind. But get this. It's, it's, it's unfair. Why would God allow this to happen? It's not that God allowed it to happen. That's the result and the consequences of our sin. Now, there's going to be a day he's going to take us away from it. There'll be no more sin. There'll be no more consequence of that sin, at least in our lives, those that say yes to Jesus. But people, it says that because of lawlessness, they'll lose heart, and it's because they're going to say, it doesn't matter how I live. God's not taking care of all these things anyway. I want to just tell you something. Be careful of that because he will. There will be a day of judgment. There will be a day of reckoning. All the things that happen are, are the result of sin. And sometimes it's not a result of our sin. It's just the result of sin in general. And so it says the love, of, the love will grow cold. What, what it, well, what it means is that their love for God will grow cold. I've done all these things. I tried all these things. I lived it out. I, I did this, that, and the other, and it just didn't work. Their love for God will grow cold. But also it means the love for each other will grow cold. How do I know that? If you go read the passage just above that, it says that they'll, that they'll, um, they'll, they'll be against each other. And so it says now their love will grow cold, not only toward God, but toward each other. They'll go to church together and go, eh, I don't. They'll see people that are hurting and, eh. They'll see people that are lost and, if you remember a few weeks ago, we talked about in John 13, 34, he says, they'll know you're my disciples by the love you have for each other. Because of sin and its rampant growth, the love of many will grow cold. You say, well, Pastor Scott, why, why do you say that? Because there's a punchline here. There's a hook here. There's a solution here. There's something that we need to hear here. <laughs> There's something that we need to do here. There's a way that we need to live here. It's not that we just read it and go on. It's that when we read the word, we have to allow it to begin to, to transform us and change us and help us to become all that Christ is. Remember, we don't read the word and make it fit us. We read the word and fit it. That's the only way you're going to change well, I tried all these things. Listen, until we begin to live out the word. Well, I don't, you just live it out. Now, and, and I realize it's, it's more than just that. We have to walk through those pieces, but the idea is, is we have to be conformed to his word. So it says, it said this, Paul wrote in uh, 2 Thessalonians, for that day, what day is that? The return of Christ, the end, if you want to say it that way, but the return of Christ, that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first. Um, and apo apostasy is not a word we use either a lot, right? Um, even in the Holman, it leaves it, that, leaves it that translation. If you read it in the King James or the New King James, it says, uh, unless there's a falling away. Yeah. Um, and in and, and other translations, the other idea is this, if, until there's a great rebellion. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to step into a, a piece right here, and I need you to hear my heart uh, in, in this because some have believed and some have thought, well, you can't lose your salvation. You can't. But why would Paul say there will be a great falling away? He's not talking about those people that are lost. He's talking about those people that have known and said yes to Christ. There's going to be a decision. There's going to be a willful decision on their part that they turn or walk away. That's what it means. There will be a great falling away. Now, now, um, uh, then, then in uh, 1 Timothy, it says 1 Timothy 4.1, in the latter times, some will depart from the faith. Um, so, so let me take just a moment here because, listen, I, I fully, fully, fully understand I, whether it was um, communicated this way or just uh, assumed on my part this way. I, I thought growing up, man, you stubbed your toe and said, shoot, you're dying and going to hell. I just sinned. I, I, I sinned and I lost my salvation. Can I tell you something? That's, that, no, listen, we, we've, we've, we've done that wrong. We've done it wrong. Hey, I, I'm appreciative of it because I, I'm going to tell you something. It kept me on the straight and narrow. Every night I got saved from the time I was about eight years old till about 27. No, no. Every night, Jesus, please come to my heart because if I die, please take me with you. <laughs> right? 
And the Lord began to communicate to me, that's immature. Not only is that immature, that's ignorant on your behalf. I'm like, well, thanks. And, and I, I'm appreciative of that, but at the same time, it brought a lot of fear and condemnation that every time something happened in my life, well, oh, i got to run back to the altar. That's why that if, if you grew up kind of the way that I did, that's why you got saved every other week and twice on Wednesday <laughs> uh, because we were so afraid, I'm going to lose my salvation. And I, and, I, and I thank God for that because it made me, it didn't make me recognize and understand some things, but at the same time, it was, it was like this. It was almost a roller coaster. But Paul said, he, he writes, he says, there's going to be a great falling away. Jesus said, he said, that there's, because of the iniquity, because of the, 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 uh, the increase of sin, people are going to lose heart. They're going to, they're going to lose. And it's not like they lost their salvation like, they, they sit, like you do your cell phone. Where did my phone go? Thank God Tiffany has on her phone. She has a thing. She can page that thing. I'm like, well, that's the greatest thing that we ever bought her was an, I, uh, an Apple watch that can ping her phone. <laughs> Where's my phone? Because she's, all, I won't say always, uh, but a lot of times, more times than once. Um, it's not like they lost it and need to ping it. It's not like that. It's a willful decision to say, I'm walking away. It's a willful decision. You say, well, well, well Pastor Scott, why, why, is that, why is that important? Why, 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 why would Paul? And in fact, in, in, the same, in the same two letters that we've been reading um, this month, in, in Thessalonians and in Timothy, he makes almost the same statements to both, to the church at Thessalonica and then also to Timothy. And Jesus would say the same thing pretty close to it in, in, to his disciples in Matthew 24. And the reason that we, we need to pay attention to these things, because there's a solution, there's a hook, there's a punchline, so to speak, that we need to hang on to and hold up and grab a hold of. And so it says, Jesus says, in verse 13, but he who endures... Because lawlessness will multiply, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures, the one that sees all of these things, the one that still faces all of these things, the one that walks through sin being rampant, he says, but the one who endures will be saved. I'm, I'm telling you, church, I, I want you to hear me, and I know that I've said this before, but I want you to hear me again because I need you to get it in your spirit. I need you to, I need you to walk with understanding. I need you to walk with knowledge in this. Um, the prophet would say, my people perish for, uh, because of the lack of knowledge. And listen, the reason people will perish is because they go to church, and all it is is a, it's an event. It's a, some club to be a part of, so hopefully that they can make God love them enough. And I'm telling you, if that's the reason you live for Jesus, that it's not going to be enough because it's going to get difficult. In fact, in, in Matthew 24, if you'll read it, it says this. It says this idea that it, the days would be shortened because if they weren't, they would even the elect would be deceived. Doesn't mean that it's going to go from 24 hours to 22 hours. Here's one of the things that I've noticed, and maybe it's because I'm older. <laughs> Time seems to be speeding up. Tomorrow is Christmas. Do you have your presents ready? Right? It seems like every time you turn around, it's a new season. It's a new thing. Uh, the kids are turning one year, old, one year older than that. Uh, you, have a, you have a birthday. I don't. I don't have birthdays. I celebrate them because I have a birth date, but I don't celebrate them like getting older. I just like the presents. <laughs> no. So, listen, uh, but, but the one who endures... See, the answer, the hook to us, uh, for us is this, if we'll endure. And how does endurance come? It comes from loving God. It comes from knowing God. It comes from following God. And the more I know about him, the more I love him, and the more easy it is to follow him. Because I understand his ways. I understand, I understand what he's trying to, some of those things that he's trying to accomplish in me. That I'm going to just keep walking. Oh, I, this is so difficult. I'm going to just keep walking. 
Because if I'll endure, I'll win. If I'll endure, I'll be saved. If I'll endure, then the reward that is before me, that he has, is, that he's bringing, as it tells us in Revelation. It, it, listen, it, it's coming to me if I'll endure. Church, we have to endure. We have to have the tenacity to say, I'm following through with this thing, and I'm going through the end. And I, I don't want it to be, I'm barely going to make it. I, 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 love, I love that. I love those testimonies. I, I remember growing up, well, I just help pray that I'll make it. And I appreciate that. I, I am no way. But at the same time, I don't believe that God's called me to survive. He's called me to thrive. He's not called me to barely make it by, by, the, by the skin of my teeth, so to speak. He, he's called me to go through to be victorious. It doesn't mean that I won't face difficulty, but he's called me to be victorious. How am I going to do that? Endure. Paul says in 2 Thessalonians 2, he says, stand firm. In verse 15, stand firm. Stand firm. Um, Paul also right, tells Timothy, he says um, in, in chapter 4, verse 13, he says, Until I come, give your attention to public reading, exhortation, and teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you. It was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Practice these things. What is he, what is he saying? Practice. Practice all these things I've already been communicating to you. Practice all these things that, that you learn from your reading and all that stuff. He says, but practice these things. Be committed to them so that your progress may be evident to all. Be conscientious about yourself and your teaching. Persevere in these things. By doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And so I'm telling you this today because I'm trying to save my hearers. Amen. I'm not talking about my ears. I'm talking about you. <laughs> Why? Because if we believe that the, the word of God is our standard of truth, and Paul's already, already writing just years after Jesus has ascended into heaven, and they're writing in the last days, anticipating that they're in the last days, can I tell you something? I think we are in the last of the last days. Well, everybody's, they, and, I, and I was reading um, uh, just a story uh, in, in some of my notes stuff, and they were talking about all the people, not all the people, but they were talking about different people throughout history. In the 1800s, people uh, saying, well, Jesus is going to come here. And then in, in the early 1900s, well, Jesus is going to come here. And, and, and uh, in 1988, which, one, which I, I remember somewhat uh, pretty because that, that's in my time frame. I, I'm an 80s dude, right? And, uh, and uh, in 88 reasons why Jesus will come in 1988, you know, and all these things. And people have always said, well, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And I'm not just saying that just to say that. I'm just telling you, look at the signs of the time. According to Scripture, we can't be that much further. And it may be 100 years from now. I don't know, but I'm just telling you, we're closer now than we've ever been. In fact, if we look at Scripture, there's not one thing really that we have to wait on for the Lord to return for His church. And so endure. Hang on. Don't give up. When you feel like giving up, throw out a lifeline and say, come help me. Pull me in. Don't, don't let me run off by myself because that's what the enemy desires for you to do, for you to be by yourself so he can defeat you, to separate you and to defeat you. Hang together. I said a while ago, man cave, and, and some of us, oh, I don't want to do that. It's Sunday night. I got stuff to do. Hey, there's no football, basketball season done, baseball is going to still be on by the time you get home as long as they play. And I don't want to do that. We need each other. We don't think it's important. It is important. In fact, the writer of Hebrews says, all the more, as you see these things coming in Hebrews 10, all the more. And when you see the, the day of the Lord coming nearer and nearer, he, he says what? Don't forsake the assembling of the brethren together. Well, what do you mean? Well, what it means is, is hey, listen, we need each other. And we need each other to stand firm. We need each other to, to encourage each other. We need each other to say, hey, listen, we, we don't live like this. The Word of God says we need to live like this. And it's not to be condemning or any of those things, but it's to be an encouragement to each other. And so... Jesus, in the scripture in Matthew 20, 24, chapter 24, he gives, us a, he gives us a story, but he gives us a hook. Because of the lawlessness, many will lose. Their love will grow cold. Their love for God, their love for others will grow cold. 
But he who endures, the hook, he that endures. Paul's hook, stand firm, continue in these things. And when we do that, when we do that, here's our confidence. Here's my confidence. When I do that, I will gain, I will gain all that he said is mine. I will gain salvation and eternity and all those pieces that, it, that he has promised that are mine. We need to be, and, and this is the way I titled this this morning, we need to be guarded. Not guarded from each other, but we need to guard our hearts so that our love won't grow cold. Father, I pray that in these moments today that your spirit would communicate, that your spirit would challenge us, that your spirit would help us to, fo to fully follow after you. Lord, I just thank you that that in your word are promises. And in those promises, in those promises, it gives us understanding. It gives us insight. It gives us details. It gives us instructions. How that if we'll, if we'll follow after you, those promises will become ours. Lord, I pray that you would protect our hearts. Protect our minds and our spirits. Lord, I pray that today for those that, that may be in this room and they, they're struggling. Lord, they're struggling in their own salvation. They're struggling in their own uh, relationship with you today because of circumstances, because of sin, because of the unfairness of life, because of all those things. And Lord, they're struggling today saying, I'm ready to give up. Lord, I pray that you would encourage them by your spirit. Lord, that you'd give them peace that passes all understanding. Lord, I pray that you'd give them a tenacity to stand in there in the midst of all their difficulties and in the midst of all their struggles today, Lord, so that we win. Because he that endures is saved. He that endures, I, I believe we can say today, wins. Lord, help us to win. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. Guard us and protect us in your precious name. In your precious name, as Sam comes to close us out this morning. I ask you at the beginning, what did you come looking for today? Hoping to gain. Hoping to hear. I don't know what you came hoping to hear, but I'm telling you, what is your response to what you heard? Because you have to be doers of the word and not hearers only. And so listen, you and I have to respond to it appropriately. A lot of times we'll do that as, as an altar call. We'll have people respond. Will you respond? And, and, and that, that's an awesome place to respond. And it's an awesome time to do that. And even as we would close this morning, it's an opportunity for you to respond. How are you going to respond to the Lord to what he's saying to you right now? And listen, you won't stand before me. You'll stand before him. And I'm telling you, if you'll respond to it correctly, it'll, it'll, it'll encourage you, it'll enrich you, it'll help you. It doesn't mean that all your circumstances are going to change in a moment. No, but can I tell you something? It'll help you walk through this thing. I, I've told you, and, and just look at Scripture, I've told you this. It's not going to get, so to speak, easier. It's going to get more difficult. It's not anything to run away from. It's time to stand firm. Stand firm in the midst of it all because he who has told us those things, he who's made the promise, even this is what Paul would write to Timothy, he who's made the promise is faithful. He's faithful to complete it in you, in us. Even so, Lord, let it be done. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise today. Man, let's all stand. Be dismissed. Let's all stand. Uh, you know, on, on Wednesday nights, we've been studying the, the I am statements that Jesus made in John. And in the video that we watched on Wednesday, the minister made a, a comment that Christianity is not a spectator sport. It's not something we can just sit in the chairs and enjoy on Sundays. That it, it, it requires active 